W dash z is not zero. So you go home and check what is W. You are already in the first part of your first module. Uh, no, in the whatever. Yeah, in the first module or whatever it is, the previous module, you have uh, uh, been taught how to find derivative of W with respect to z. You go home and find it. You will see that this condition, a b minus b c, is not equal to zero. It imply that b w by b z is not equal. That's what this condition will tell. This map is confirmed because of that result. This map is confirmed because of this result, which you can see from an analytic function f is confirmable at z if f dash z is not zero. So, I think the transformations are everywhere. Uh, we, I also show you these uh, bilinear transformations. I will not find a and this. So this is
Magnification could also mean compression. It could become half, one by three, and things like that. This is translation. This is rotation. And this is inversion. Inversion is probably a new thing for you. So please be careful at, uh, attention to this. So these are the four fundamental bilinear transformations. Now, in general, I will not uh, prove this, but it's a standard thing to do it in a first course in complex analysis. This is composition of all those four. That means, geometrically, I tell you what it means is when you move a complex number z to wz using this formula, first you are magnifying, multiplying by a, then translating, adding b, and then you are also inverting. Actually, what you do is first you magnify with C, translate by D, and then take its reciprocal. That means you have inverted this, and then you add something and multiply something else. You will get um, uh, one more translation and uh, magnification. So, bilinear transformation is composition of these four. Means all these four are happening together. Together means you will magnify. And translate, then invert, then uh, rotate, all those things happening together is what bilinear transformation is. That is why they are very important. Because all the four fundamental operations in the plane are happening together. This is the main thing about bilinear transformation. These are the few examples, elementary examples of bilinear transformation. Uh, yeah, inversion is what I have told you. Uh, so more examples on GeoGebra, I don't know if I will have time, in the end I will show you, but yesterday I showed you some of the bilinear transformations. This is the important part, that I want to see what is the extent of the uh, This is again, you see, this fundamentally differs from what you have been taught in real numbers. In real numbers, what happened was the following, you had the real line, here is 0, here is 1, here is minus 1, here is 2, here is minus 2. Understand the geometry. Now, as I go this way, of course, this line doesn't end, it goes on and on and on. This line also doesn't end, it goes on and on this side. Now, whatever is at this end, end means there is no end in the first place. Whatever number is larger than any given number, I call it infinity. And whatever the number at this end, I call it minus infinity. Of infinity. That means keep on going in this line where, where you end up. You won't end up at any one particular point, but symbolically that is told as minus infinity and this is told as plus infinity. So in our mind, if I have real line, if I go this way, I will hit one point. If I go this way, I will hit another point. There are two different points. But See what happens in complex plane. Same thing, I will convert it to complex plane, which means I am adding the investment axis. Now, if I go in this way, I will hit 1 infinity. If I go here, I will hit i infinity. If I go this way, I will hit minus i infinity. There are so many different jatis of infinity. There are different categories of infinity. Uh, that becomes more difficult. Means to handle all of these is not only difficult, it is the earth, it is useless. We don't need to do that. What is done is it takes a bit of maturity to understand this, but uh, I will still make an attempt and tell you this. This way, if you go, you hit some infinity. This way, you go, you hit some infinity. I will say both of them are same infinity. Somehow, I will try to connect both of them together. This infinity, this infinity, I will say I'll connect. It's like instead of a plane, you think of a sphere. Instead of a plane, you think of a sphere. It's called a Riemann sphere. And all the infinities are denoted by just one infinity, this infinity. There's no plus infinity, minus infinity. Yeah, it's, a, you know, it's not very easy to accept first time when you hear this. But uh, this rotation, after all, this infinity is a symbol. So if you accept this symbol, they help you in your computations. That is precisely why this is come. And also, geometrically, uh, it makes a bit of sense, but it makes sense, but uh, right now it may be a bit arty. So I won't give you too much of geometric interpretation. Uh, all I want to tell you is, you go in whichever direction, you will hit the same infinity. 
infinity is anyway we can't see i can't write it on the board so wherever i go i'll call it infinity only property which is relevant for this course is 1 by infinity is zero that means go far away and take a reciprocal you will end up at zero this is the only property even for real numbers it was true 1 by infinity is zero similarly my 1 by minus infinity is also zero that is the bottom line so use that concept and say that Whichever direction you go, one by that will be zero. So this is the only property you need to use it. So there is a standard name for this. This is called extended plane. So beautiful topological constructions which I don't have energy, time, and it's not needed also to understand this. Is what is extended here? All I want to tell you is I have this complex plane. With this complex plane, every point in the complex plane is a complex number. There is one point which is not in this complex plane, and I will call that point as infinity. I will just say with complex plane you take this point also. Such a thing is called extended plane. That is complex numbers union infinity. Not just a sectarian equation; it is topological, whatever it means. Means this infinity is very close to numbers which are very large in complex numbers. Large means whose magnitudes are large.
this is the question i want to ask yeah. so this is a function not just from complex numbers but from the extended plane that means i want to tell you i want to ask the question where does infinity go under this map that means if i put z equal to infinity what sense does it make so let us do the usual arithmetic z equal to infinity a to infinity is infinity that's what i just told in my notification infinity plus b is again infinity so numerator becomes infinity denominator also infinity infinity by infinity is what there is a headache so in mathematics whenever there is a headache you say okay it is undefined correct so in your calculus course you have been taught infinity by infinity is undetermined uh, some, some name it is indeterminate or undetermined or some such thing so here in complex analysis i can do a little bit of algebra and do a meaning to this you see what happens this is same as i divide both numerator and divide denominator by z then i get a plus b by z divided by c plus d by z all i have done here is divide numerator and denominator both by z so a plus b by z divided by c plus d by z now you see what did i want this is w z i want to know what is w of infinity so if you put substitute infinity for z i get b by infinity and d by infinity but i know 1 by infinity is zero so b by infinity is b into 1 by infinity which is also zero so this will be a plus zero divided by c plus zero which is a plus a by c so this is a beautiful answer what it says is infinity w infinity if i write it properly w infinity is a b by z, a plus b by z divided by c plus d by z then i'll substitute for z infinity so this will be 1 by infinity 1 by infinity will become 0 and a by c that means under this bilinear transformation infinity will end up at a by c a by c is a finite number unless c is also zero but both c and d cannot be zero that we know already because ad minus bc is not zero if c and d both are zero this will become zero that's one of the reasons why i picked up this condition at the beginning so both cannot be zero uh, so right now i can see that the infinity will go to infinity of course c can be zero if c is zero this is also infinity a by zero will be infinity so i say infinity goes to infinity this is what happened in case of translation and uh, magnification through the process so this is one question where does infinity where does infinity go under bilinear transformation it goes to a by c a by c is a finite number if you have understood this you try to take an explicit example z plus uh, 2 divided by uh, 2 i z minus 3 so let us see this is a bilinear transformation a equal to 1 b equal to 2 C equal to y, d equal to minus three. Correct. Now our definition. This is a bilinear transformation, and here if I put a equal to one, b equal to two, c equal to two y, and d equal to minus three, I get this. So this is a bilinear transformation. In this bilinear transformation, I want to know where does infinity go. This bilinear transformation takes various complex numbers to various complex numbers, not just complex numbers. I want to know where does infinity go also, because bilinear transformation is not the whole of Extended plane. So W of infinity is I might divide both sides by z. So I get one plus two by z divided by two i minus three by z. Z is infinity. So two by infinity is zero. Three by infinity is zero. So this is equal to one by two i. What are this number? Multiply and divide by i will get minus half. So infinity will come to minus half under this map. Under this map. A by C. That's what I get. Minus A by C. Is it minus or is it? No, A by C. Sorry. So it's not minus. So one by two. one by two I. It happens to be minus half. That's okay. That doesn't matter. So it, this is another thing which you have to keep in mind. When you are talking about bilinear transformation, you want to know where does infinity go. That's also it. Also has to be treated like any other point. That is what. Like any other finite point. Only extra algebra here is one by infinity is zero. That is what I need to do. There is another question. Uh, that is, what comes to infinity? 
in the bilinear transformation if this is the bilinear transformation which i already have somewhere here uh, Yeah. Under this bilinear transformation, I have just seen that W infinity goes to A by C. This is a transformation from extended plane to extended plane. Now, what I want to know is under what conditions will this be equal to infinity? First, I saw if this is infinity, what happens to this part? Now, I am asking if this is infinity, what is this? That means what comes to infinity? Here I say z goes to az plus b divided by cz plus b. It's the same thing as saying this comes from z. So now I'm asking if this is infinity, what comes to infinity? That means what is the point here which comes to infinity? We answer. Take a minute and understand. If this is infinity, what can I say? If this is infinity, I can say cz plus b must be zero. Cz plus b is 0 means z is equal to minus b by c. But this is a finite point. If c is not 0, if c is 0, it is infinity. That's okay. Infinity goes to infinity. If c is not 0, this is a finite number. So here is a finite number which is going to infinity. This is the extra thing you need to understand when talking about bilinear transformations. Bilinear transformation under extended plane. The first thing is I wanted to know what. Where does infinity go under a bilinear transformation, which you can see on your screen, that it goes to the A by C. And the next question is, what comes to infinity? That means if image is infinity, what is the pre-image? Pre-image happens to be minus B by C. That can be infinity if C is 0. That's okay. Uh, so this is, so in all our discussion about bilinear transformation, we will be using extended plane under these conditions. That I want to know that infinity goes to a by c and minus b by c goes to infinity. These are the two extra facts I need to remember, recall, and keep using. Okay. The next point I want to talk is the following. You must have all seen in case of usual functions, for example, in case of real functions, you have fx is equal to. Uh, x squared. So let us take this is a real number functions from real line to real line. So if you take this function, I want to know what are the points which are fixed, which means, okay, let me try to tell you the geometry of this. This means, uh, you see, 2 goes to 4, 3 goes to 9. Of course, you don't have to worry, 2.5 also goes to 2.25. So you have to think about it. This is not just for integers. This is for all numbers. So you take minus 2 goes to 4. So you think of this as some real number moving to some other real number. Some real number moving to some real number. 2 moves to 4, 2 point I goes to 2.25. 2.25 is sorry, 6.2. 2.5 also is 6.25. 3 goes to 9, minus 2 goes to 4, etc. 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 In this, I want to know. Which are the real numbers which are not moved at all? That means what? I want to know image must be same as the pre-image. That means x square must be equal to x. What are the numbers for which x square equal to x? I know how to solve this. x square minus x equal to 0, which means x minus 1 is 0, which means x is equal to 0 or x equal to 1. So they are the x is 0. This will not have moved because f of 0 is 0, f of 1 is 1. So these are the two points which are not moved at all under real life. Now I want to ask, this is your first piece, you have already done such things. Well, this is, you know, this is another way of asking, if I ask the question that what are fixed points of f of x equal to x squared. If I ask this question, basically I have to solve this linear uh, quadratic equation. So, this was a question you must have been asked in your class 8 or 9 when you first tried to solve quadratic equation. 
same question i am asking in a slightly sophisticated way here what are the fixed points of this function fx equal to x square in x square by x square equal to x which means this i don't know there's nothing special about x square i will even do this what are the fixed points of f of x square equal to x square plus x but then x square then what do i do x square plus x must be equal to x x x x cancel and x square is zero so x equal to zero is the only fixed point for this Nothing special about this x square plus x. You can write any question, any function here. For example, x two plus two x minus three. Then write this. I want to find fixed point of this. Means what? You want to find which are the points for which x two plus two x minus three equal to x. So you solve this cubic equation. Cubic equation may sometimes easy to solve, sometimes not easy to solve. But any yeah, standard formula. All I want to tell you is the following: This question, what are the fixed points of a given function, is equivalent to asking the question: Solve f of x equal to x. Solve f of x equal to x. This is equivalent to asking: What are fixed points of f? That means. Think of f as geometrically as somebody who moves various points to various points. Then I am trying to ask what are fixed points means what are the points which have not got moved. Asking this question is equivalent to asking solve f of x equal to x. And W is the dependent variable. Z goes at this. W is W of Z. So that means there is a function from this complex plane to this complex plane. And I said I want to consider only these kind of functions. C Z plus B, where A product A B minus B C is not equal to zero. These are called bilinear transformations, and we have already seen these are conformal mapping, etc., etc. What I want to know is Under this map, that means, you see, if you take one point here, it's imaginary somewhere. If you take another point, it's imaginary somewhere. This we saw in GeoGebra yesterday. So, as you move a point here, the points here also will move. The question I'm asking here is, for which point the image will not have moved? That's called a fixed point or invariant point. Which means, I want to find, find. Z such that Z is equal to W. That means A Z plus B divided by C Z plus. B. I want to solve this equation. Z going to Z equal to A Z plus B divided by C Z plus B. This is easy. This is already in a class eight. You see, this is a quadratic equation. You can put Z in the denominator. So let me rewrite this. What I'm trying to solve is z solve z is equal to a z plus b divided by c z plus b. This means cross multiply c z square plus b z is equal to a z plus b. Right? Because I'm going to take the standard form. You know what I did in your class eight? C minus a z. Sorry, sorry, sorry. C z square. Plus b minus a z minus b equal to zero, right? So what I'm trying to tell is the fixed points of this map are roots of this equation, this quadratic equation. Where did I get the quadratic equation from? 
I want to take x points of this function. X point means the image. Image of z is this. I want the image also to be z. That means z is equal to w z. That means z is equal to a z plus b divided by c z plus b. That's what I have done here. And algebraic manipulation and uh, bring it down to your standard quadratic equation. So what are the roots of this? We know that. What are the roots of this? So if you think of this as a x square plus b x plus c. I know a b c are all different. A and b and b and b minus a and c is minus b. You understand what I'm saying? It's a standard quadratic equation. Something times x square plus something else times x plus something else constant equal to zero. What are the roots of this? Z is equal minus Yes. <laughs> 
Yeah. Oh. Oh. 